Hogan's Heroes was part of my life growing up. Bob Crane was always in my living room and the living room of millions of Americans. He was one of the most beloved and recognized faces on television. And his death remains one of the top unsolved celebrity murders of all time, one of the biggest murders that has ever happened in Arizona. During my career, I've had a lot of big cases, but the Bob Crane case tops them all. Crane was in Scottsdale in June of 1978, starring in Beginner's Luck at the Windmill Dinner Theater when he was found bludgeoned to death in his apartment. His longtime pal John Carpenter became the main suspect in the case. He and Carpenter used to meet out on the road and have sex with women and videotape their exploits. Carpenter became the prime suspect when blood was found in his rental car, matching Bob Crane's rare blood type. We're trying to talk to you about the murder of Bob Crane. This I understand. In Scottsdale. This I understand. And then, what do you think about that? I think it's a great, but when you sit across from me and accuse me of killing my best friend, one of my best friends. Well, I'm still I think thinking I, that you did. All right, then fine. Then in fact, I, I a, think I would be able to probably prove that you fine, did. Then fine, then I'm not going to say another word. Carpenter did this. He's the guy. No doubt. No doubt. 100%. 100%. Carpenter eventually went on trial in 1994, but DNA was in its infancy, and at the time, the DNA tests could not positively link the blood found in Carpenter's rental car to Bob Crane. Because of that lack of evidence, Carpenter was acquitted. Not guilty of murder in the first degree. Signed, four-person, Michael E. Lake. Hey guys, as we get ready to do this story on Bob Crane and the murder and trying to unravel this using modern DNA science, I want to show you what we've been delving into for the past year and a half. Here in the Maricopa County Attorney's Office are the evidence boxes that were taken um, and remained here for many, many years after the trial of John Carpenter. Some of his personal effects, his hair, his blood, which we sent out to be tested at the lab, DNA collected from the car, John Carpenter's rental car, in one respect, very interesting, and in another respect, very sad to, um, to see this because these are the pieces of a man's life cut short. Bob Crane was only two weeks shy of turning 50 when he was murdered. That is the car door that was the key to this entire case. There was blood on the door leading out of Bob Crane's apartment right above the door handle. This is all indications of the perpetrator leaving the scene of the crime with Bob Crane's blood on him or her. John Carpenter was put on trial in 1994, but as some of you may remember who were here, John Carpenter was cleared of murder. He was, well, let's put it this way, found not guilty. Doesn't mean he didn't do it. It means that the prosecution could not prove it with the evidence they had. That was 16 years after the crime was committed, and that always as any investigator will tell you, can complicate things greatly. But here it is, all of the evidence that we've been pouring through for the past year and a half. And um, the county attorney's office has done a spectacular job working with us and furthermore, allowing us the opportunity to try to do this and come up with some definitive answers that we couldn't come up with. And as Bill Montgomery told me a couple of weeks ago, as a prosecutor, you're not afraid of the truth, wherever it may lead. And that's what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, this is part of what we've been doing the past year or so. Uh, boxes of evidence, 11 boxes of evidence in the, in the uh, Bob Crane murder. These are Bob Crane's prints taken at autopsy the day after his murder. These are Bob Crane's fingerprints among the just macabre, uh, odd items that we came across. John Carpenter's prints. John Carpenter's signature, taken by Dennis Borkenhagen, the investigator from Scottsdale, on July 2nd, 1978, three days after the murder. John Carpenter's fingerprints, the originals, right on the print card. Take a look at this. It's another piece of evidence that's been locked up for some 20 years now since trial. This is Bob Crane's comb and actually hair samples from Bob Crane that were found in his bathroom and uh, put in these vials bagged as evidence with an evidence tag. Um, again, I mentioned before, it's like a time capsule. This is one of the stranger items, and it's actually an important item. These are John Carpenter's swim trunks that were left in Bob Crane's apartment. And the significance of these is that the day that um, John Carpenter left Scottsdale, Bob Crane was to take him to the airport. It was noted in Bob Crane's day planner. 
And leading out the door of his apartment was an edited copy of Saturday Night Fever that Bob Crane was going to give to his seven-year-old son, Scotty, and John Carpenter's swim trunks that he had left at Bob Crane's apartment. He left them right in the path leading out to the front door. A clear sign to investigators that Bob Crane put those items there because he planned to take John Carpenter to the airport in the morning. That never happened. John Carpenter took a cab to the airport, turned in his rental car that morning, and took a cab to the airport. And investigators always wondered why the plan changed suddenly. Remember, Bob Crane was in Scottsdale that June performing in beginner's luck at the Windmill Dinner Theater. He performed this show all over the country, but there's an evidence tag, an original flyer from the Windmill Dinner Theater. Just some of the items, many items, that we've been going through since this investigation started really a year and a half ago.